So he believes that if you know the language, if you understand your history and culture and your ethos, you will be able to ensure that you are never enslaved. So in that sense, that is the key to their prison in the sense that if you are not if you are well enlightened about your entire culture and language, you will never be prisoners to anyone. You will never be anyone's slaves. But in now, because they have not done so, he believes that's also some kind of a contributory factor to why Alsace and Lorraine have passed into Prussian hands. All he said seemed so easy, so easy. I think too that I never listened so carefully and that he had never explained everything with so much patience. It seemed almost as if the poor man wanted to give us all uh, before he knew before going away and to put all into our heads at one stroke. So it almost seemed like he was a man in a hurry. He wanted to give it all almost in his swan song. You know, it was la like his last innings at the crease. After the grammar, he, we had a lesson in writing. So there was more to come. And that day, Hamel had new copies for us written in a beautiful round hand. France Alsace, France Alsace. They looked like little flags floating everywhere in the schoolroom, hung from the rod at the top of our desk. You ought to have seen how everyone set to work and how quiet it was. The only sound was the scratching of the pens over the paper. So see what a vivid kind of a description the author has painted in these kind of lines. You know, you can almost imagine how the classroom would have been absolutely quiet and focused on that last day learning French. Uh, once some beetles flew in, but nobody paid any attention, which means that usually they would get distracted by the sight and the sounds of those beetles. But nobody paid any attention to them, not even the littlest ones uh, who worked right on tracing their fish hooks as if that was French too. On the roof, the pigeons cooed very low and I thought to myself, will they make them sing in German, even the pigeons? Now, this is an important line and that's a commentary, a very sarcastic comment on the fact that will the Prussians, who are the new owners in that sense of these two towns of Alsace and Lorraine, will they even force the pigeons to now coo in German and not in French? Right. So it's a very sarcastic comment on the fact that, you know, the new owners, the new, uh, the invaders who are now occupying this land want to affect this change on the people of these two French towns. Whenever I looked up from my writing, I saw Hamel sitting motionless in his chair and gazing first at one thing, then at another, as if he wanted to fix in his mind just how everything looked in that little schoolroom. So you can see that the teacher is in a very morose state, he's looking very forlorn, he's feeling very sad, right, at the prospect of having to leave that school where he worked for 40 years. For 40 years, he had been there in the same place with his garden outside the window and his class in front of him, just like that. Only the desks and the benches had been worn smooth. The walnut trees in the garden were taller and the hop vine that he had planted himself. So he had a role to play not just in kind of bringing up children in that school, he had also a role to play in the vegetation that was planted at that particular school. So he had a major role to play as far as the growth of that school was concerned, both in a physical sense, also in a metaphorical sense. How it must have broken his heart to leave it all, poor man, to hear his sister moving about in the room of her, which meant that he also lived in the same school premises, packing their trunks, for they must leave the country the next day. Okay, the country, because now these two towns are part of Prussia, so he'll have to go to the other part of France, where the French rule, not the Prussians. But he had the courage to hear every lesson to the very last after the writing. We had a lesson in history and they go on describing about what happened in that history lessons. And Hosseret put on his spectacles and holding his primer in both hands, spelled the letters with him. So there is a sense of enthusiasm in the classroom. You could see that he too was crying. His voice trembled with emotion and it was so funny to hear him that we all wanted to laugh and cry. So, you know, people say, you know, you, he was crying while laughing, you know, so even laughter has that kind of an emotion. So there was a flurry of mixed emotions going about inside the classroom. Uh, well, I remember it, that last lesson and that's what gives the title to this particular story. All at once, the church clock struck 12. Then the angelus, 
At the same moment, the trumpets of the Prussians returning from drill sounded under our windows. Now, this is important because there is a contrast that he has introduced out here. The church bells signifying peace, the Prussian soldiers who were there blowing their trumpet, basically denoting war, right? And a triumph of sorts. The trumpet, the trumpet is creates that kind of a sound. The church bell has a very different kind of a sound to it, right? Uh, so that's the contrast that he has built into this particular paragraph. Um, Hamel looked up, stood up very pale in his chair. I never saw him look so tall. Now, this is also very important. Now, literally, maybe because he's standing there on a pedestal. So from the point of view of France, he's obviously a tall man. But the author also wants to convey that at that particular time, the respect for him from the children, including little France, had kind of increased, right? As a result of which, he looked taller than usual. My friends, said he, and he choked and he could not go on. And then he finally said, Viva la France, basically saying, long live France. Then he stopped and leaned his head against the wall and without a word, he made a gesture to us with his hand, school is dismissed, you may go. Right? So that's the end of this particular story. Let's just go through the themes of the story because that's very important because as I said, you need to understand the, the context in which the story is written. It's basically providing us with an idea about how one's identity and language uh, are basically interconnected. Your language is rooted to your identity. And what happens when there is an attempt to Cut off the ties between a people and its culture and their culture and their language by, in this case, a powerful enemy that is the Prussians. And it also kind of conveys how language comes to the surface uh, during a crisis. Why do the students and the people feel so emotion, uh, I mean, emotionally moved in the last class? Because it's also talking about the fact that they have lost a connect with their mother tongue their language right so in that sense they feel very emotionally moved and they also feel a sense of threat because tomorrow it's going to be an alien that is going to enter their classroom the french was someone a language which they kind of connected with because it was their mother tongue but tomorrow it is going to be a newcomer a guest a visitor an alien which is going to enter their life their classroom. So in that sense, a very drastic and a very dramatic change is going to take place from the next day. Now, as I said, the narrator of the story is a young boy. It's not an adult and that's why it's also very important because the whole thing is told from the perspective of a young child and it's important because the story is about the impact on the future of these two towns in erstwhile France because they are now going to Prussia. And the broad theme of the story, it also gets interconnected because the broad theme of the story is about change. In this case, probably a change not for the good for the people of Alsace and Lorraine. Uh, and a change which can be quite disturbing, very disconcerting and bringing about a sense of uncertainty. Uh, and that's basically what happens during war and that's what is reflected in this story. So, see how smartly through the story of a school, a classroom, he's been able to make a larger political, geopolitical and a socio-cultural point, right? It's about the importance of one's identity and language. <clears throat> it also talks about pride in one's own language. So in that sense, you can also refer to it as linguistic chauvinism in that sense. Because the moment it is the area, these two towns have been ceded to Prussia, the order comes that German should be taught. So. The other theme is basically about how the people of this, these two towns have now been uprooted, displaced and disconnected from their own language, culture and identity. Now, what is special about this story is about how you need to love and learn one's language, which is precisely what the people of these two towns did not do all these years, despite having the facility to be able to learn the language because the language is basically linked to their identity. The individual identity, identity of each one of them in that classroom, also the collective identity of that entire population. Which is why if you see in a larger context and if I may give you an example from the Indian context, if you see the anti-Hindi agitation taking place in Tamil Nadu, why do people in Tamil Nadu get so upset with the imposition which they see of the Hindi language? Because they see that 
it is trying to in a sense replace Tamil which is the oldest language in the world by replacing it with a, with Hindi which is not a language they are most comfortable in which is why when you two years ago when there was an attempt to paint the milestones on the national highways in the Hindi language the, the signages were in Hindi there was a whole lot of protest in Tamil Nadu because they saw that in Tamil Nadu because India is a nation of many states with its own linguistic identity so you cannot have a thing of one nation one language right each state each region for that matter for instance if you go to a state like Karnataka you will have Kannada spoken there you will have Urdu spoken there when you come to the northern part of Karnataka you will have the Hyderabadi Urdu because it was all part of the Nizam's territory in the coastal part of Karnataka you will have languages like Tulu and Konkani also spoken in addition to um, um, Kannada in the absolute south uh, coastal part of Karnataka you will have a mix of Malayalam and Kannada so you'll have different kind of dialects and languages spoken which is why people take pride in their region's language and to uproot and disconnect from there is something uh, it's it's seen as something very very negative and evil so basically the teacher is emphasizing the point that you should not take your own language for granted because then when it comes a time when you will be uprooted from that village the Prussians in this case ha would have the uh, liberty to kind of poke fun, to mock you saying that oh you claim to be Frenchmen but you don't even know French that well enough. And why is Germany and this is an important political point, why is Prussia sorry keen that German should be taught in those schools in Alsace and Lorraine right from the next day because they do realize that if it wants to control the minds of the next generation, children like France. Uh, you need to change the linguistic ethos dynamics of the region because over a period of time what will happen is that once they keep starting learning uh, start to learn german they will forget french right so you change the ethos and the dynamics of an entire region by introducing a different and a new language and make it compulsory that you got to learn german so in that sense it's mind game of a different kind it's mind game of a political kind okay and I call it cultural and linguistic imperialism okay uh, it's an important phrase to use in your answers the story is also one about regret and that's what you feel and when you see the personality of the French teacher Hamel you feel that he was feeling very very regretful about the fact that the people took the French language for granted the children also feel it the narrator also feels it so do the adults who have attended the class on that particular day in that sense, it's a metaphor of sorts for the defeat of France itself because it was unable to hold on its people to what was intrinsically French, the language and by extension the culture and therefore they lost. Okay, so the loss in the war is physical, right? But and that's for everyone to see. But there is a bigger loss that this story focuses on and that's the loss of one's language, culture and identity okay but at the same time there is also some hope in the regret that Hamel and many other people feel that in the future the future generation probably will not make the mistake that the earlier generation made now uh, I spoke about the pigeons lines and I said talked about how it is sense, said with a sense of sarcasm almost with a sense of disgust and the fact that it has been said by a child it kind of also conveys a sense of awareness or in that young generation that they do realize that there is a uh, little hope for the immediate future uh, even the teacher is not really spared by war um, Hamel is seen as representing the French uh, language uh, who must go now and he is replaced by another person who is not named in this particular story who will come to teach German uh, what the message is that the Germans recognize the importance of the classroom and it's also deeply political as I pointed out something which the French did not quite realize or at least the people of France did not quite realize in these two towns. Hamel moving away also shows displacement of a kind of being uprooted from one's roots after having spent 40 years in that particular school uh, and it shows that which is almost a lifetime and it shows that war in that sense is pretty heartless it does not really care for emotions of human beings and uh, the last point the new clothes that he wears it also are indicative of a hope that new life beckons Hamel when he goes to 
France and in that sense it's a swan song of sorts for Hamel. I hope you have understood this story, a very fascinating story which I said you need to understand both the political context as well as the literal context of the story in order to be able to do justice to the answers in the examination. Thank you very much for watching. We will be continuing to do the entire syllabus, English syllabus for CBSE class 12 students. So do stay tuned to study with Sudhir. Thank you very much.